you've probably heard about numbers as pi, the square root of 2, or e. But surely, the first numbers you've known since childhood are 1, 2, 3, and so on, which are what we call natural numbers. Natural numbers appear from the origins of mankind, based on the activity of counting. As an example, we can easily say that here we have sets with some quantities of elements. And if we count each one one by one, we can ensure that there are two triangles, three smileys, and four garfields. One important aspect is that the process of counting considers elements one by one, so the number that follows three is obtained by considering one more element. We can write this as 3 plus 1 equals what we call number 4. But the key idea here is that a set with 4 elements goes after 1 with 3 elements. That is, 4 is the successor of 3. As a child, sometimes I set out to count down to the biggest number I could. So I used to start as always. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The fact here is that I will never finish. For instance, if I take 100 million, there is an easy successor, which is 100 million and 1. Actually, every natural number has a successor. But now, let's note something. When we count anything, we always have a starting point, which has nothing before. It's like we have a row of runners in a race. We know that the grey Sonic is in position 5, successor of 4, the yellow one in position 4, successor of 3, and so on till we get to the first one. 1 is the successor of who? You can argue that 1 is the successor of 0, because 0 plus 1 equals 1. Well, if you're willing to consider empty sets, then you could add to them an element and say that 1 is the successor of 0. No problem at all with that. But now, 0 is the successor of who? Some of you may say that the answer is minus 1, because minus 1 plus 1 equals 0. Unfortunately, there is a problem here. We didn't state that the sum here is an operation, as it is only a way to indicate the successor of some number, so this isn't valid. And as if it wasn't enough, it doesn't make sense to consider a set of minus 1 sonics. This is because minus 1 is not a natural. With this, we can state that naturals have a starting number, 0 or 1 depending on your consideration, which is in successor of any other number. For now, we will consider 1 as the starting natural, but the rest of the video is equivalent by considering 0. Another important property of naturals is order. If we have two bags of candies, we can easily affirm that the one at the left has more candies than the one at the right. But in fact, what does ensure that the number 3 is bigger or goes after the number 1? They are just symbols that represent sets of things. Here, the concept of successor is key. We know that the successor of 1 is 2, think about it with sets of smileys, and the successor of 2 is 3. This process creates a path of successors from 1 to 3, which gives us a more rigorous argument to justify that 3 is bigger than 1. We can do this always we want to prove that some number is bigger than other. For example, there exists a path of successors from 3 to 6, so we can ensure that 6 is bigger than 3. Finally, we can define more rigorously what naturals are. Consider some natural number, 1, 200, 1000, which we will call n. Every natural represents a set with a certain amount of elements. Every natural has a successor, which we will call in general n plus 1. Naturals have a starting point, which is in successor of anything, and there exists a relation of order, so we can follow a path of successors from one natural to another that is bigger. All of these are our basic properties of naturals, and the ones that define them. Before we get into the dominoes, let's see a last but crucial property. Consider a village with a population of 550 people on 10th August. After one month, the population reduces to 549 people, and in October it changes to 551 people. Now, imagine that the village will exist forever. We can write down the population of the village for every month, which is a set of natural numbers that we will call the set of monthly population, 
We ask ourselves whether this set has a minimum element. Let's imagine that not, which means that we can every time find smaller and smaller populations in the set. In this case, we take 549 as an example. And as we can always find a smaller number, we find, for instance, 547, which is smaller. Remember the path of successors. In this way, we will find smaller and smaller numbers, till we end up with 1 in the best case scenario. But we can't find 0 people in the set. That will mean that the village disappears. So as long as 1 isn't the successor of anything, with our convention, we can't find numbers smaller than 1. So there has to be a minimum element, which is 1, or other natural and 0. With this, we can ensure that every set of naturals has a minimum element, a key fact in the relation between naturals and dominoes. When we push the first domino in our row, we expect that all the rest will fall. But we can't wait till infinite dominoes fall, so we need a faster way to prove it. For that, we set the basic rules of our dominoes row. The first piece will fall, and if the end falls, it will push the successor domino. To prove that every domino will fall, we label the pieces with natural numbers, and consider two sets. The set F, with the pieces that fall, which includes 1, 2, 3, and general pieces name A, and the set S, with the pieces that keep standing, and that we name by B1, B2, and so on. The key idea here is that F and S are sets of naturals, so they have minimum elements. Moreover, as a domino piece can only fall or remain standing, all the dominoes will be in F or in S, so the natural numbers are completely divided in these two sets. As we have said, both F and S have a minimum element. For F, this is clearly the first domino, and for S, it should be a number that we will call B1. But if this is true, the row could be divided in two parts, with dominoes that belong to S and that that are in F. As V1 is a minimum element of S, there aren't dominoes that remain standing before V1, so it is the successor of a domino that will fall. But this is a contradiction with our second rule. The only possibility is letting V1 to be a number which isn't successor of anything. This number is our starting point, number 1. But this is a contradiction with our first rule, as 1 belongs to F. So the only option left is that in fact there are no dominoes that remain standing, that is, S is empty. And with that, we can see that F represents all the natural numbers, so we are able to state that every domino will fall. All this process gives us an informal proof of what we call the mathematical induction, which establishes that if some property of a natural number, in our case the falling of the corresponding piece, is satisfied by 1, and given that it is satisfied by a general number n, it implies that it is satisfied by its successor, as our dominus rules, the mathematical induction ensures that it would be satisfied by every natural number. In our case, the set F is exactly the set of all naturals. This principle represents how naturals behave as domino pieces, and we will expose its utility with some other examples. Consider an infinite row of people, labeled with naturals. The rules for this row is that the first person knows a secret, and if the nth person knows the secret, that person will tell his successor. The property of naturals that we want to check is that every corresponding person will know the secret. With these rules, we see that number 1 satisfies the property, and given that the nth person knows the secret, as it is told to the successor, this one now knows the secret. So, given that n satisfies, n plus 1 satisfies. This is sufficient to prove that every person in the row will know the secret, as we have proven that this is a property of all naturals. Note that we didn't need to check that every person in the row knows the secret. 
the mathematical induction could be used for proving properties or formulas for naturals in general by these two simple steps. For example, it could be proven that the sum of the n first naturals can be calculated with this formula. I will leave you a proof in the description below. Finally, we can summarize what we have done in this video. First, we have defined naturals almost from scratch, studying their principal properties. Then, we have seen that every set of natural numbers has a minimum element, the well-ordering principle. At last, mathematical induction has been proved, and we have seen some simple examples where we can apply it. Thanks to 3Blue1Brown for the organization of Summer of Math Exposition 2, and to all of you who have watched the video. Subscribe and have a nice day.